You add yogurt or kefir to your smoothie for the probiotics, right? But what if your high-speed blender is actually killing those good bacteria? Today, I'm diving deep into what happens inside your blender and whether your gut is missing out on the benefits. What happens during blending? High-speed blenders like Vitamix or Blendtec can reach 20 to 30,000 RPMs. That's revolutions per minute. Think about it. That's a ton of times in one minute that your blender blade is spinning around. This generates frictional heat. Temperature can rise above 115 degrees Fahrenheit in just 60 seconds. And sheer stress. The blades create intense turbulence near their tips. Without getting into the rest of the physics involved, my big questions here are, one, does heat from blending kill probiotics? And two, can mechanical force, shear, break their cell walls? What does the science say? Let's talk about heat first. So we're gonna look at lactic acid bacteria because there's a lot of it in both yogurt and kefir. And per this peer-reviewed article, most lactic acid bacteria thrive anywhere between 86 and 113 degrees Fahrenheit. This is why we typically ferment yogurt and kefir within that range. However, above 122 degrees Fahrenheit, their viability starts to drop sharply. Temperatures above 149 degrees Fahrenheit can be lethal for most strains, especially with prolonged exposure. Let's look at another strain, l -Roideri. This isn't as commercially available, but it's a strain I use often, and it dies at an even lower temperature, about 111 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, its optimal temperature is even lower, but we're talking about complete death here. Then we have some kefir yeast that even at 86 degrees Fahrenheit start to not do so well. So yes, blending at high speed for 30 to 60 seconds can potentially reach temperatures that start killing sensitive probiotics. And yes, even with frozen fruit or ice, high speed blending can still generate localized high temperatures around the blades due to sheer blade friction and vortex heat. The bulk of the smoothie may stay cool, but spots near the blade can hit probiotic killing temperatures. So this is why strain survival depends not only on ingredients, but speed and duration. Vitamix, for example, advertised that the friction of the blades can make hot soup by blending all ingredients on your machine's highest speed for about six minutes. Typically, you're not gonna blend your smoothie for that long, but it just shows the heat that can be generated by these blenders. But here's a hint. I don't think high-speed blenders are off limits with yogurt or kefir. And per science, like I've mentioned before, the extent of cell injuries depends on heat but also how long at that heat. I'll get into my recs on how to keep your probiotics safe in a minute, but let's get to my other question. Can shear kill bacteria too? This was the most difficult point for me to prove or disprove because there are simply no direct studies that examine the survival of probiotics in yogurt or kefir after blending in a high-speed home blender like a Vitamix. However, there is evidence from related processes that show how mechanical forces can rupture bacterial cells. These processes aren't identical to blending, but they share key mechanical forces. So I'm not claiming blending definitely kills probiotics by the blades literally slicing through them, but there's scientific reason to be cautious if you're trying to preserve maximum live cultures. So how are these processes related to blending? This study on atomization, which is basically shear from high pressure spraying, showed probiotic cell damage. And similar local forces happen near blender blades in our home blenders. It's just in a different physical shape. And this study on homogenization looked at eight probiotic strains and showed shear and shock reduced probiotic survival. And again, blenders don't use pressure in the exact same way, but they create similar levels of turbulence and shear from fast blade motion in a confined space. And this study on spray drying, basically turning a probiotic or liquid into a powder, combines heat and shear, but showed that even at low temperatures, mechanical stress was alone shown to damage cells. So this reinforces the idea that shear alone, like from blending, even aside from heat, 
can be a threat. Okay, so we're seeing that our household blenders don't generate the same magnitude of shear or heat as industrial systems, but they combine multiple moderate stressors that together could reduce probiotic survival, especially in fragile strains. So my honest takeaway is that blenders may not kill all probiotics, but they could harm enough to make a difference, especially if you're using yogurt or kefir for gut health. And most importantly, speed and duration matter. So I think it's worth being cautious if your goal is to keep the probiotics alive. So what can you do to preserve the probiotics? All right, to give you an idea, with the Vitamix that I own, let's say, Speed 1 is about 1,400 RPMs and Speed 10 is around 20,000 or maybe even a tad more. So blend on Speed 1 or close to it whenever possible. Keep blends under 30 seconds, especially if you're using a high speed. And then take breaks to keep the blender from heating up. You could even use an immersion blender for less shear and heat. Add your yogurt or kefir after blending. Stir in manually. And using colder ingredients could help you, but know that frozen ingredients require effort to blend, which can still generate a lot of friction and shear forces. So what I often do is I blend my smoothie by adding a little water to get things going at a high speed. I get everything super smooth. Then I add my yogurt or kefir and blend on a super low speed just to mix everything up. But I'm also really not afraid to use a high speed if I'm blending only briefly. And here's a bonus for you. What if the probiotics are dead? So maybe you blended too high, you killed everything. The good news is even dead probiotics can help. This study, for example, shows that dead probiotics can still benefit us by modulating our immune system and reducing inflammation, even without being alive. But if your goal is to populate your gut microbiome, you need live probiotics. In summary, blending could harm probiotics, especially at high speeds and long durations. To get the full probiotic benefit, treat them gently or stir them in after blending. Let me know what you put in your smoothie and remember to eat real food. See you in the next video.